folks. I got my GoPro back on my helmet. Can you believe it? All I had to do is just pick it up off the table and uh, unplug it from the charger. Disc was already clean from the last trip. I was all ready. I just forgot it. So I'm on PCH right around the corner from my house. Not right around the corner. I live up at the top of the back bay. But uh, look at that view of Saddleback. The snow is gone. And I just got a little tip from my buddy Nick over at Till Death Doula Sport that the Wildemar OHV Park is open. And I figured it is literally the closest dirt to my house. I think it's still the closest dirt, but it's 50 miles. But it goes up uh, Ortega Highway. And I figured what better way to go to Ortega than down PCH and... Uh, creep up Ortega and then drop in the Wildemar OHV Park and I gotta finish up my video here about uh, the hippo hands and uh, yeah you can see the uh, Brave and Balance little speaker setup on the front here. I needed to see if it was going to be uh, too distracting to have something on that front man rack and uh, it is neon green so if it's going to be distracting it'll be this today so uh, needed some tunes. So, here we are on uh, PCH between Newport and Corona Del Mar. Uh, that, there goes Toledo Island. That's one of my little pedal routes. So, I figured to uh, give you guys a shot of uh, PCH in January 2020 on a Monday. into Laguna Beach very uh, artsy fartsy tons of galleries and I'd say on the vibe of uh, as close as they can get to Berkeley because that's my feeling of how they want to feel it's only ain't nothing wrong with that I went to school up there not technically at Berkeley but at the uh, California College of Arts and Crafts right there college and Broadway Right there, Berkeley, Oakland, and Piedmont, the intersection of, right there in the hills. Rolling down to the main beach in Laguna here. Hang a left at this light, 133, spit you back out in Irvine. These guys are uh, inspecting the, the beach area here. Uh, sneak back in front of them since they uh, don't have their light on. It's tourista season here year round pretty much. Summertime especially, but wintertime's a nice, uh, nice kept secret. I love it when it's uh, June, when everyone's trying to get the front of the season. They come here and it's June gloom for the month, and everyone's like, why in the heck would we come to California? It's like, yeehaw, we have enough people here. But hey, what am I to say? I'm originally from Alabama. Check out the ultra hauler van right here. Some kind of specialty uh, van for transporting. Looks like hikers or something. He's got a take a hike sticker and he has a California plate, not a Mexico plate. You see this a lot. Uh, Mexico transport. And I noticed those little uh, door locks when you swing the door open. It's got some kind of special uh, locks on the doors, I guess, to keep the doors open. I'll have to ask my man Will, Taco Slayers, Maddox Designs, what he knows about that. Hiker transport. So yeah, uh, Maddox Designs, if you need stickers, 
Hit up my man Will over at Maddox Designs. He does all of the Yamaha T-Dub Club stickers. And a bunch of people in the RC car industry and a bunch of people in all kinds of industries. He used to do our stickers way back in the day of a uh, gravel crew. Alright, you're probably wanting to know about these things, but uh, I'm going to wait till we get on the road that drops in to Wildemar. When it's just me, you, and the road down to the dirt. Then we'll chat it up right now. You're just going to do the ride along with me down PCH. Scrub forward if you like. Or hang in there and check out the sights. Good old Laguna. Aliso Beach right here. Home of skimboarding. Spent many a day skimboarding this little beach right here. Look it up on YouTube. Victoria Skimboards back there uh, on the 133. That's where their home office has been for a bazillion years. And a lot goes down at the, uh, I used to call it Victoria Beach. It's Victoria Skimboards. Did some graphics for them uh, way back in the day. I used to live maybe five minutes from here. And uh, it would be skimboarding session in the morning before work. Lunch skate session at this Pipe and Irvine ditch. A.K.A. Pipe. Thunder Run. And then uh, it would be a bodyboard session at Newport Beach. And then back home. Did that for many a years when I was working in that industry. All right. Dana Point. Whew, look at the collection of Volkswagens over here. Of construction going on in Dana Point. They're just redoing this little town all over. It's always been a tourist destination, but they're just up in the ante with more hotels and more, more, more. Packing them in, stacking them up like sardines. But the weather is pretty much unbeatable from here to San Diego. That's a hundred miles of just super beach towns all the way down. Probably a hundred miles north of here, too. California. It's crazy. I grew up my whole life wanting to be here, getting the opportunity to come out when I was. 18 or 19. <clears throat> Used college as a way to get out here. Been here ever since, but man, more and more, my wife and I have been seriously contemplating super inland or super out of state. Hate to play or hate, but man, financially things uh, are hard to uh, hard to keep up with. Been pretty lucky all my life with the uh, the work front, and uh, but these days it's like who wants to hire the uh, old marketing guy? What do I know? All these new kids know everything, right? But we'll see what happens. I'm on the market shopping, but if anybody is in the Costa Mesa area and needs a good. Uh, marketing person I still got tricks up my sleeve all right here's where we're gonna hang a left and we're gonna head toward or take a highway and off to wilderness yeah we actually have a little bit of wilderness in Orange County
be a good wind test. It's the beginning of uh, Ortega Highway. Cuts over the mountain from Orange County to Temecula, Lake Elsinore, Corona. For years, this road was kind of a secret little over the mountain backcountry road. It's fast, working its way to become a major highway. At some point, they're going to put a freeway through here, I bet. So much moving in over here on the Orange County side. So many people have moved over to the other side and work over here. And the traffic through here could be two, three hours in the morning. It's kind of ridiculous, but it's the way of Southern California living. Used to, this was a awesome moto. Well, still is. You see a lot of guys in the morning. They'll shoot up here and ride the, ride the turns. And uh, back in the day when I lived off of Crown Valley Parkway, to have a Yamaha RZ350 little two-stroke street bike in the honor of Kenny Roberts. This was my uh, Sunday morning double lap course. It was really fun. They used to not have the, uh, the rumble strip in the middle. It was just a single lane and the road was not as wide. But back then, it didn't matter. There was so little traffic. You could easily get two laps and on a Sunday morning before you saw your first car. Now this road's got traffic 24-7. But it's a way to get over the mountain. The car guys, the tarmac turn chasers like to use it on the weekends and it's also a way for us to get up. Well, right now we can't, but this was another way up to Saddleback, but also over to Wildemar OHV Park. But the Wildemar OHV Park has been closed with all those big rains at the end of 2019. It's been closed for several months. But the word is it's back open, so we're going to go investigate. We shall see. All right, back on when it, there's two sections of the bridge. Upper section is east side of the bridge, and the lower section is this section here. More open, and uh, I'll click it on when we hit the bridge over there. And here we are about to come up to the bridge. I just noticed that little trail up there. I'm sure it's a hiking only trail. I just noticed that. It was probably an old road and now no longer accessible. But mountain bike or hiking, probably get up there. But here comes the little bridge I was talking about. Looks like they're talking about some road work ahead here. But this is the uh, what I call the upper section of Ortega Highway, and the wind is just like full on head head winding me right now. And it's a climb all the way up to the top. All right, so one lane ahead. Sorry. So give me an uh, opportunity to talk with a little bit lower wind. Good old Ortega Highway. Always some road hazards over here. San Juan Trail, mountain bike trail. We just used to call it the Ortega Trail, but that trail is the trail that made us start wearing helmets in the mountain biking era. That was early, like maybe 90, 91 or something like that. Started mountain biking out here in 88 and discovered this trail, the San Juan Trail. And originally we were just trucking up to the top shuttling down but later in the years I'm like all right time to start pedaling up all this stuff so you pedal up 
turn around, shoot back down. Oh, looks like this uh, last rain snowstorm put, put a lot of debris on the road. us T-dubbers, small CC motorcyclists, this is kind of the non-freeway way to get out to the desert when I did my uh, Big Bear moto camping trip. This is the way I came get over the mountain. But today we're going to go up to the top, hang a right go down to Wildemar OHV Park. You can actually ride all the way down to Temecula from the top. If it's truly open, we'll find out. You'll come all the way out to uh, Clinton Keith Parkway. Pretty windy over here today, though. Weather's changing. It's actually warming up. Technically, I don't even need to be running these, but it is kind of nice. I got my super summer gloves on, and it's kind of nice. My hands ain't feeling it. Not because they're cold, it's just because I'm blocked by hippo hands. off right here. To the left will take you up Saddleback and to the right will take you to Temecula. South Main Divide Road if it's truly open. We'll find out. There's a gate down here on the other side of these houses and we will see if it's really really open. Could be. Be like a nice happy New Year's. been doing a lot of work up here. Woo, look at these mountains. Mount Baldy, Big Bear. Lake Elsinore. Biker's been making some new little tracks. Ooh, that wind kicking today. But where we're going, we'll be down in a nice tree covered area, pretty much for the most part. Blasted me. Yeah, like I 
like I said, there's people living back here. A remote little neighborhood. There's a big time hang glider jump spot right here. That's not a canoe. It's a hang glider. They jump off and go off the edge uh, over Lake Elsinore. We're here on a massive wall right here. They're starting to jump off there more. They used to be jumping off up here quite a bit. But I heard some uh, controversy about them starting to shut this upper area down. We'll see. back on the side shrubbery. Help prevent fire jump if a fire does break out. look out this is the old uh, the old jump spot yeah take your pick and go off right here right there and up over here Lake Elsinore little airport out there and also the uh, dirt track short course You know, you know me, always in search of uh, little dirt trails, a little, a little cut through section. <laughs> Probably don't want me riding through here, but hey. <laughs> See where these guys. Like really impressed with how much clearing they've done back here. Yeah, there's some really nice homes over here, and it's it's a small neighborhood, but this is pretty remote. Like, I don't know if the old dirt road to get you down to Marietta quick is still open over here, but you have to go all the way back to Ortega, and either down into Lake Elsinore or all the way to Dana Point to go get groceries. So this is. This is fairly remote. Or you could just quickly hang glide down to the 7-Eleven. It'll be a long hike back. But these are some really nice spreads back here. I wish I was uh, financially in a situation where I could move out like this and This is the uh, the little side cut road. Let me slow down here. We're still in this little residential spot for just a moment. I'm sure at some point this is either all going to get shut down permanently or made into residential living with zero access to the dirt. The sad truth of Southern California. So this is not the gate. This is used to be the gate they would close all the time. So you'd know early, like, hey, okay, got to turn around and go back. But now there's a another gate down here that they've added in. But look at these homes back here. Jeez. Yeah, 
I'm 28 miles from the gas station. I should have looked at how many miles from my house to the gas station, but I was just getting my last gas. That's the closest gas station to here. Well, closest on my side. It's, it's probably technically closer to a, a gas station down in Lake Elsinore, but I'm not coming from that side, so I hate backtracking. So I just make sure I get gas at the last spot. But my uh, mileage confidence is going up with my excursion that Nick and I did in the desert a while back. I know I can pretty much get 100 miles on a tank of gas. I'll hit reserve at like 70-ish, 77 if I'm riding right. Uh, I'd, I'd never taken it the distance. You know, running lower air pressure, running uh, jetted carb and an aftermarket pipe. Those just all eat into your gas mileage. And the gate looks open. All right, we are off to Wildemar. All right, so hippo hands. These things are diabolically awesome. Uh, got these before this last little trip. I was so excited I got everything sorted out. And uh, got packed up, got, got out to the desert. And lo and behold, I left my GoPro home. So my riding impressions was over two days and they really came into play in those afternoons when the sun was starting to dip down and the temperature was dropping fast and my hands never noticed the difference. My body felt the difference, but my hands never felt the difference. So that was really, really good. Um, so I'm, I'm in love with these things. I would highly, highly recommend them for anyone riding in cold weather just because you don't want your hands to get cold. And at my age later in life, cold hands is even worse. So I really got to look after my hands. And I'm usually taking an assortment of gloves with me. But I've just found that more and more I can't get it an adequate glove to keep my hands cold to be thin enough to actually feel the throttle or feel the handlebars. I don't, I don't like puffy gloves. I'm already running puffy grips. My favorite grip of choice is the Pro Grip 714. So I run a little bit thinner of a glove. Today I'm running super thin. I'm running these Fox. I don't even know which model they are. But they're like super thin. I wear these when I'm mountain biking most of the time. Uh, but my hands, as soon as I pull it out, I'm like, oh, okay. I can feel the cool breeze whipping through. But with the uh, hippo hands, it's cut them. The, the biggest thing, you know how I was like cracking up about the under flap on the, uh, in that the previous videos that we shot out in the desert and it was like super cold out there that's when we were like oh my god we really need hippo hands but i i totally dig this little under flap that's what i noticed on this last trip is when those brush comes by and i always seem to flick your fingertips when you're out in the desert they'll they'll flick off of your hand guard hand guard's doing a job maybe i need to just rotate the hand guards down more but then you're losing your front protection so these uh, hippo hands have definitely uh, sorted that out. So, you know, cold weather, brush, they're, they're, doing, they're doing the business. So this OHV, uh, Wildemar OHV park that I'm going down to, this was the place that I taught my daughters how to ride motorcycles. I'd bring them down here. And uh, it's kind of a quiet place. Not a lot of people come here. 
we would come early in the morning just so we would be the only ones in the park they would it helped them with their confidence they didn't you know you know how girls are they don't want anyone seeing them when they're getting their learning on but what was awesome is this was our base so I'd bring them here you know train them whatnot get them riding in here and we would go off riding with some friends and you know, go do another desert route and they'd be a little scared but they were learning all that but what was awesome is when we came back to here their confidence would just be that much higher so it was really interesting to keep coming back and forth here and just watching the confidence level go up these guys are putting in more more gates here and that access road is I don't know what they're doing they either they have a plan because look at Wildemar this place is just growing back up in here this is like I don't know what you'd call it North Temecula or whatever but it obviously burned over here and I think that's why they had all this shut down for a, a while but good old Nick came through with the trusty information and I asked him like hey he was asking me if I want to come ride tomorrow or or Wednesday and I'm like ah, I have to work <laughs> today's my day off so I'm popping out here on the Monday So that might be the Paula Mountains. But yeah, really neat area down here. This is kind of like the ridge that separates the ocean and the mountains. And it runs all down behind Camp Pendleton. Uh, past Temecula, I keep forgetting that. Uh, area down there but it's the Santa Ana Mountains so it runs up into you know up through Orange County but it's literally the mountain that separates the ocean from the bigger mountains so, so this is uh, the first influence of weather am I really seeing this gate open as well that might be our little drop into uh, Wildemar today. Holy moly. I mean, I could run all the way down into Clinton Keith. I don't know if we want to do all that. But this is the top of the park right here. And you can see, like, I don't know if they've been grooming those trails or, or what. But I'll give you a little rip through the park and we'll check it out. This is where I, because my daughters were on XR 100s, and then my older daughter wasn't riding as much, so I started riding her XR 100, because that way, when I'm riding with my younger daughter, I could just jump off of it, you know, help her with whatever. I wasn't spraying her with rocks, because my other riding bike was my XR 400. So I just, it was just too big to ride with her, because, you know, you just twist the throttle, and I'm spraying her with rocks and stuff. And, so the XR100, you know, riding as an adult was quite fun because I could like pop off and take pictures of her and it was just awesome to, you know, be riding motos, you know, with my daughter. So I eventually adulted it. I made big bars on it. I put a tall seat on it. I put BBR lower subframe. I had BBR springs front and rear. So it was pretty much everything you could do for an adult version. But the only problem was it didn't have a ghetto pass aka license plate and that was the crux of me making the move to just wanting a TW200 that much more not the same bike but I just like the little bikes and uh, that was part of it the other big influence was Jason over at pedals bike shop 
you know we were having all these conversations and it's like dude why don't you ride your big bikes more and I'm like yeah I have so much fun on these stupid little bikes and I told him about the TW and he started looking into it and then he got hooked on it and so he kind of accelerated me into getting a T-Dub and then like it was then Ricky got one and then I can't even remember all the guys but next thing you know we had like 13 different guys oh yeah my man Alex got one he's my uh, Yoda Masters like Land Cruiser buddy like we had met a long time ago at the Yoda Masters shop and then next thing I know he's getting a T-Dub and uh, so it's pretty rad and then Nick like not even knowing us he got a T-Dub around the same time so we started hooking up and our first big club ride man we had like 22 T-Dubs out there I think it was 22 I don't know it was a lot we had a Kawasaki Sherpa and oh yeah we had like a Grom on Nobbies uh, so it was kind of like the you know we're, we're an open club to, to the spirit of uh, the T-Dub but at the end of the day we're, we're chasing the T-Dub life fat tires just like our 80 series Land Cruiser alright Wildemar OHV Park this place has uh, been the spot for a lot of little excursions I'll show you the exact area where it all started for my for my daughters rain's been through here pretty good So this is the OK Corral right here, the training pit. And this is basically where I started my daughters off riding. Just doing laps around this little park right here and then doing them backwards and all that kind of good stuff until they got comfortable with it. Then I'd take them out on those other trails and then they would come back in here and then it was just like, all right, just keep on going. And then, uh, so after they did a 9,000 laps in the, in the OK Corral, then, is it here? Is it down there? Oh yeah, it is here. It's just been so long. I haven't, I haven't, uh, done any kid training so there's this other little section over here I was literally like park my moto and running next to them or behind them or b beside them let me go down here and find this little area but it was just a little lap on these little trails here and uh I just get them going yeah see look it's got sand training I probably didn't take them through this little lap first probably one of these other little laps over here but this is the old uh, Wildemar stomping grounds. But it was cool because once they kind of mastered all this stuff over here and then uh, go out to the desert and then they'd come back over here. Yeah, this kind of little area over here is what I remember I'm training them on. But yeah. This is pretty much good good training grounds, good practice grounds, good everything. Yeah, you'll come back here, you'll see Jeep guys, you notice these Jeep tracks on the ground. Or they may be UTV now, because they run all the big tires now. But yeah, this is a... A whole little park with a whole bunch of little trails that come through here <laughs> yes and it has some dead ends this is kind of cool I haven't been back here in so long Perfect little spot for 
Just working on your skill sets. Oh, they've been working on this. Wow. Cutting, cutting some water bars. Somebody lost some inner plastic. Man, I have uh, I've done a many of laps in here on the old XR100. And I'll say this is the first time I've brought my uh, T-Dub in here. So it's kind of cool to come back to the old uh, stomping grounds. Yep, yep. Brop. Yep, all the same rocks. <laughs> same but different. Rocks are in the wash, but they scraped. Somebody's just came through and just done some maintenance on this place. Pretty amazing. This place is known for like crazy rain ruts. <laughs> Suck you in. Oh, look at that old uh, car off to the side the road that's well, we just came from up there so the cut back we'll cut back to the deep side of the park this is one of my favorite little laps through here well, it looks like they got that closed or they're trying to close it I want people to go around this way now <laughs> I got a got a trail map in here now. Oh, that's funny. Hey, you are here. That's pretty cool. <laughs> nice. Well, the Mar trail map. All right. Let's uh, continue our Wildemar tour loop. There's those ruts. So, honey, this is a good, uh, this is kind of a perfect place for honing the dual sport skills. It's got a little of everything. You know, all the hill climbs that you're going to encounter, loose dirt, ruts, rocks. So it's not a motocross track unless you're on a little XR100 you can treat it like a motocross track but you better be uh, mindful of your rocks and your water water ruts yeah wow thought that loop was closed but guess not but that's all right we'll just keep making our loop around to the back corner pocket over here Woo! rut rut see I told you good training ground good training ground this place has gotten a little rougher but that's what happens over time with water on the hillside but so what makes it such the perfect little training ground
only problem with this part, I guess not. It's, it's not a problem. It would just get tore up even worse. But this could be so fun right at the rain, you know, right when it starts raining or something. But I guess it could come and throw us out if you're catching in time. Now this is the, uh, I call it the back, the back corner pocket. There's a campground at the south end of the park. We'll actually get to that next. But this is the back corner pocket. A lot of memories here. Oh, what I was saying is, is whenever there's a rain or this place gets wet, they'll they'll close it down, and they'll generally three days after the mud hole dries up, they'll open it. I don't know, it's just at their discretion, whether it be fire or whatever. But hey, when you're desperate to ride and. You know, we're in Orange County, so we don't have a lot of options. So we kind of cherish uh, cherish what we got. And the fact that we have this, kind of abide by the rules and hopes of uh, keeping it alive and usable. And, well, hey, it is a Monday. <laughs> but I'm the only one out here in the park right now. Ah. I've probably never seen more than I've, I've never seen more than 15 people in this place at one time. But if they're on a quad, it does make it a little sketchy. It makes you very aware because there's such a little peaks and climbs. You never know what's over on the other side. So you meet a quad in the road on this little trail, and you're like, "Whoa, whoa, Nelly!" But how good is this stuff, man? Like a little sand trap. Oh, I remember these. This is the water bars into the sand traps. Work on your bubble scrubs. I did see that. I saw that too. That's, oh well. Yeah, we'll just keep trucking along. I know the back section over here that gets into a section that drops off into some cr well, As luck would have it, mm, my GoPro battery ran out and I was getting ready to plug in my GoPuck. Yeah, there we go. Get to the sun here. Just gonna plug in my GoPuck to keep my juice going. And man, I gotta I gotta start marking these things because this plug here does not fit the GoPro. The plug that fits the GoPro is in oh maybe I have one in my backpack. I grabbed this out of my GoPro GoPro case, thinking this is what I was gonna use to juice it up. But give me standby station identification. Yeah, no, I don't have a spare cable. I have my uh, I have my iPhone cable and uh, that's it this cable was the other spare cable and I grabbed the wrong one so that's going to conclude that little bit of uh, video and that's pretty much what you need to know about the hippo hands a they're awesome b they go on really quick c they keep your hands warm and d they protect your hands from the brush that whips off your hand guards and slaps you in the finger knuckles or the fingertips even so there you have it that's my review of the hippo hands i highly highly recommend getting you some especially here in the winter time like yeah okay we're in southern california it's not winter right now right here it was a week ago but for the rest of the country when it's winter time it's winter time all winter so get some hippo hands because you've seen hippos have you seen those hands yeah, okay. No worries. I don't know. Hippo hands. How, how did you get that name even? Yeah, we'll, 
we'll have to talk about that next time. But guess what? I love my hippo hands and I'm gonna keep using my hippo hands. And just for the quickness of it, I'll pick that up. But here's how here's how quick they come off. You just like uh, give it a little loosen, give it a little pull, and off they come. Just like that. Alright, gang. Overview of Wildemar. Maybe I should just duct tape the uh, iPhone onto the front of my camera. Wish that was a possibility. All right, until then, Yamaha T-Dub Club out.